I was bullied as a kid, uh, made me feel powerless. So I know what drew me to magic. A magician makes things happen. There's this cool illusion of being the one in control. I've always liked that idea and it kind of got me through some tough times. If I meet someone who's been bullied, I tell them things change and life definitely gets better. So if you can use static to charge your phone, why settle for anything else? And I guess that's a fooler. I fooled Penn and Teller last time and it was one of the great moments in my life. So much has changed since that moment. I now have a wife and a baby. I show my daughter magic sometimes just to see her fun reactions. Got a video of it on my phone. You wanna see it? <laughs> she seems fascinated by my Fool Us trophy too, so I'd like to bring her another one. I wanna fool Penn and Teller this time for her. so much. Thanks, Brooke. Hey, Penn Teller. I'm going to show all of you a trick that can only be done on TV. Cube. Mixed. One second. Solved. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me. As I said, this is a trick that can only be done on TV. Some of you may have seen me do this trick on TV and you're thinking, I remember seeing that trick. I don't remember being this disappointed. <laughs> That's because if you saw me do this trick on TV, you don't remember seeing that cheap green folder. It was there, you just didn't see it. That's because with this very specific shade of green, this green folder was able to be used as a green screen. Now on TV, a green screen can be digitally replaced with anything, which is why it's one of the unwritten rules of Fool Us that you can't use a green screen in your act, because I could just replace it with anything I wanted. Solve cube, mix cube, Fool Us trophy. <laughs> or I could replace it with nothing, make it look like the table is empty. And that looks great when it's me and a TV camera. Not quite as effective when it's me, a TV camera, and a live Las Vegas audience. Because all of you see that green screen, so you assume that behind it, there must be a mixed up cube. Which there is. And if you assume there's a mixed up cube, you probably assume that all I'm doing is just switching cubes behind the screen. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm not switching cubes. Switching cubes isn't that practical anyway because of what you see here, a solved cube and a mixed cube, you can only do the trick one time. The solved cube would start behind, the mixed cube would start out front. You can mix it more if you want, doesn't matter. It's never going to get solved. Then you'd put the mixed cube behind, you would make the switch, bring out the solved cube and the trick would be over. Because if you're switching cubes, you can't mix the solved cube. But like I said, I'm not switching cubes. So what if I did mix up the solve cube? And what if I did the trick again? You see, a lot of you were really fooled for about one second. <laughs> because one second is all it took for most of you in this room to think, okay, he's using a third cube. All right, fine. But what if I did the trick again? You see, at this point, you're not thinking, he's got a fourth cube. You're thinking, how many cubes does this fool have? <laughs> and if I was switching cubes, it'd be a lot. Because I'd want to do the trick over and over again. The problem is, I wouldn't actually be solving any cubes. I would always be switching for a solved cube. So doing the trick over and over again just ends up being a domino effect. This cube gets switched for cube one, then cube one gets switched for cube two, cube two for cube three, and so on. So at this point, you're not even impressed by the trick anymore. You're more impressed by my organizational skills. <laughs> But you might be thinking, if I'm not switching cubes, can I do the trick without the green screen? Well, yeah. What is the easiest way to solve a cube on TV quickly without using a green screen? It's pretty simple. Just make yourself a green cube. 
works the same way as a green screen. Every sticker is green, so you just digitally replace the stickers with anything you want. Solve cube, mix cube, fool us trophy. Two problems, number one, same live Las Vegas audience. And number two, I'm guessing it's one of the unwritten rules of fool us that you can't use a green cube in your act. My problem is I can't solve a normal cube quickly without hiding it. So if I can't use the green screen, I have to use something else. I could use my coat, but this doesn't prove that I'm not switching cubes. It may prove that I'm some weirdo that likes to hide cubes all over my body. <laughs> I want you to forget all that. Just for a second, I want all of you to put yourself in Penn and Teller's place. If this really is a normal cube, and I'm not switching, then what is happening behind this green folder right now that allows me to do this? Well, obviously I can't tell you, <laughs> but I can tell you I'm not switching cubes. Were you one of those kids that could just crush the Rubik's Cube? Absolutely not. So. <laughs> so how did this trick come to be? This all came from a joke. Uh, this, uh, there's a joke that I see a lot of magicians do when they're doing cube magic, and I always thought there was something more to the joke, that there was actually a really good trick, and uh, turned into what you saw here. Mm. What happens when tricks go wrong? Oh, I, I prefer to have something go not according to plan in my real show. Years ago, I used to keep all my props in a case on stage when I would perform. That case fell behind me. Every prop I owned shot into the first eight row of the audience, like a tidal wave, and the crowd went crazy. And after the show, I had at least a dozen or so people come up and say, hey, we'd like to book you for our event, and we want to make sure that you do the case thing in yeah. our show. They probably thought it was part of the act. So yeah, they thought it was part, you know, and what's the worst that can happen? It can't be much worse than that. It's a great attitude. Okay, Brian, let's see if your cube magic mixed up Penn and Teller enough to get you a trophy. Let's hope so. All right, boys. As the one who does most of the talking for Penn and Teller, uh, I want to tell you, Brian, I believe that's the best patter we've had on the show. Wow. Um, that, is the, so that is the best script, the most beautifully delivered, just uh, the timing and everything, just, just wonderful all the way through. A nice, clear concept people could understand and then re-explained and then expanded and just beautifully put together. And if... If we were giving an award for Patter, that would come down right now. But that's not what it is. Okay. We really think we have a good idea how you did it. But what, we, what we're saying to each other about how you did it uh, uh, feels half-assed. <laughs> and even though we use logic to figure out how you did this. We just cannot figure out how you did it. So, you fooled us. Yeah.